Hello and welcome, I'm Omnus and today we're going to do the 100 best debut albums of all time with Rolling Stone. This has been delayed for I think, well not, all, not a half a year but pretty close to that because it was requested a shitload a shit while ago by uh, Stephen Young of course. And he wanted me to do the, uh, well this list, so there we go, I'm going to repeat it again. Um, yeah, the well, the front covers, you know, the thumbnail, so to speak, is uh, Lady Gaga with the fame. Yeah, I do agree with that. I don't think it's all time worthy, but sure, put it on there. I mean, I do respect Lady Gaga for that matter. Uh, Patty Smith with Horses, that is a good one. Uh, I believe De La Soul with Feel High and Rising Soul or something. I believe that's De La Soul. Pretty sure. Uh, we have the Beastie Boys uh, with Slice of the Hill, of course, classic. Uh, Madonna, self titled, I think. Weezer, self titled, Blue Album. Jimi Hendrix, Are You Experience? And Guns N' Roses, Appetite for Destruction. One of the most overrated debut albums ever, but you know, it still is a debut album. It's critical acclaim, so sure, put it on there. So those. Um, eight are gonna be on the list probably. They almost spoiled like 10% of the list already. Like, they give a fuck. Yeah, so those eight are gonna make it. Um, you know, I was definitely thinking, I was definitely thinking Beastie Boys and Weezer for sure. Not really sure about Lady Gaga. You know, Patty Smith is of course a classic, so. Um, Led Zeppelin, of course, their debut album, Pearl Jam 10. That's definitely going to make it, since it also made the 500 greatest albums of all time. Uh, I really hope Morbid Angel, Alters of Madness is going to make it, but it's probably not, because it's metal. Ooh, spooky. True spooky for me. Um, Dio, Holy Diver. I mean, they're not saying like, you know, you know, I was thinking 100 greatest debut albums in rock. That, that, was, was, that was what I was thinking, but it just says... The greatest debut albums, you know, defined not by genre but just of all time. So, um, definitely maybe by Oasis, Gish by Smashing Pumpkins. I really love those albums. Um, fucking hell, man. Uh, what else? Please, please me by the Beatles probably because I mean it is Rolling Stone at the end of the at the end of the day. So there we go. So those are some, um, you know. You know what's the thing? I don't fucking know. Those are some predictions. There we go. Uh, we're gonna check it out. Uh, what do you think is gonna be on the list? Leave it down in the comments before you watch this video, of course. Or maybe while you're watching it. Um, and let me know your favorite day also of all time. I'm thinking about some. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, in the Court of the Crimson King by King Crimson. I was thinking about prog bands. You know, do, have, do prog bands have some good debut albums? And I mean, King Crimson's debut is pretty much the, you know, emphasis on, on that, so there we go. So, don't need, so I really don't need to elaborate on that. Maybe Emerson Lake Palmer self-titled, but it really doesn't matter, honestly. But still, hopefully it makes, makes it. Uh, number 100 is, uh, yeah, by the way, I'm gonna say the number, gonna say the title, the artist. If it interests me, I'm gonna talk about it. If I hate it, I'm gonna, um, you know, if I hate it, I'm gonna talk about it. If I'm just neutral about it, I'm not really gonna say anything and just move on before this gets way too long. Uh, number 100 is The Fame by Lady Gaga, good debut album by her. I don't really care for other albums. I, I do like this album. I think the the Monster or something, or the, the Fame Monster is pretty good. But besides that, you know, she's kinda eh for me. I do like her debut, but that's about it. But yeah, I mean, number one, number 100, that's good. Oh yeah, and by the way, Rolling Stone also mentions uh, Is This It About The Strokes, of course that's gonna make it. Illmatic by Nas, I mean, outside of rock. You gotta have some rap on there for sure, you know, to please both spectrums. Number 99 is uh, The Gilded Palace of Sin by The Flying Bur Burrito Brothers, that's a funny name. Um, number 98, Luke Sharp by Joe Jackson. Number 97 is DJ Shadow, Introducing. I believe I've heard of this album. It's like really acclaimed in the um, in the like techno world. I believe it's pretty much like 
the the granddaddies of records or something. I don't fucking know. I've heard it's good, so if you want me to check it out, then I guess you know DJ Shadow sounds cool. So there we go. Introducing, not introducing, but introducing. Clever title. Then we have 96, which is uh, Madonna self-titled. Never really cared for Madonna. I mean, she's alright. She's you know you can put her on there. I don't really give a shit. So there we go. Number 95 is uh, Here's Little Richard by Little Richard. Number 94 is The Who Sing My Generation. I actually forgot about the, the My Generation uh, album by The Who. Great debut album. I think it is a little bit too underdeveloped for my taste. It's a little bit too simplistic. It's kind of, you know, it's reminiscent of The Stones, I think. And speaking of that, The Stones are probably gonna make it too. I don't fucking know, but. Uh, great debut album. I do really like it. I don't think it's you know as strong as their later works, but it's definitely a great way to start things off. Then we have 93, which is almost killed me, but the hold steady. Number 92 is Moby Grape by Moby Grape. Number 91 is uh, Arula Ar by uh, Mia. I've heard of Mia. I've heard of you know uh, Paper Planes, and I believe that's on this album. Don't really care about her. I, you know, it, it is good that she is on this list. You know, she's critical acclaimed for her age, so that's pretty good. Uh, number 90 is number one record by Big Star. Number 89 is Upstairs at Eric by Yas. Then we have 88, which is Homework by Daft Punk. Definitely a, a record that I have on, not per se heavy rotation right now, but I do really dig it. Uh, it is a great debut album. It's pro it probably is the best techno album ever together with Discovery or maybe uh, Random Access Memories, but you know, I wouldn't really go there. You know, it's new, it's not really techno. It's, you know, but homework is definitely like one of the great, I do really love it, and you know, it's deservedly on there. So, there we go. Now we have 87, which is Mass Romantic by the new Pornographers. That is a iffy cover, iffy name. Yeah, I'm just gonna move on, it's pretty cringy. Oh, wow, we have an we have actually a really weird pick on there. Um, This is kind of difficult because I know, well, Rolling Stone is kind of retarded, but uh, this is Good Kid Mad City by Kendrick Lamar. I don't hate the record, I do like it, but it's not a debut album. It's the second one, Section 80 was a debut, but Rolling Stone probably means major label debut. But it's not a debut album, so good record, don't put it on there, it's not a debut, fuck you Rolling Stone. Then we have number 85, which is Rage Against the Machine, Rage Against the Machine. I actually didn't actually, uh, actually, actually, actually didn't think about this record, but yeah, of course, it's a classic. All the hits are on there. I mean, it's basically a great hits album. It's a classic. Do I really need to, um, you know, fucking off. Do I really need to elaborate on this album? It, it's one of my all-time favorites. I love it. I mean, Rage Against the Machine, rock on. Then we have 84, which is Whitney Houston with Whitney Houston. Uh, 83 is Spade and Phil by Eric B and Rakim. Um, yeah, I've actually heard a lot about this album. Uh, Rakim is one of the best rappers, I think. Eric B is a very good DJ, so this is a very great debut album. Uh, yeah, and, and you know, not, I don't really care for rap, but this is definitely one of the classics and one, you know, if you would put it on here, I wouldn't mind it. I wouldn't spit it off. You know, I wouldn't spit it on myself, but if it would be put on, I don't want it. Number 82 is Heart of, Heart of the Congos by the Congos. That's a dumbass name, but uh, there we go. You know, as long as they play on the Heart of the Congos. That was a stupid ass joke. Forgive me, uh, number 81 is Entertainment. You know, if you can call it Entertainment by Game of Four. Number 80 is Mr. Tambury Man by The Birds. Uh, yeah, I actually thought that this was a uh, Bob Dylan cover or Bob Dylan song. But maybe the birds covered it, or maybe Bob Dylan wrote it for them and later, you know, did it himself. So there we go. Uh, number 79 is Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley. I've actually reviewed this album. It's okay. I believe I, I did gave it like a neutral rating. It's a good record. I don't think it's like the greatest debut album ever. It's 79. It Deserved to be on there. I, don't, I definitely don't think it's like, you know, all time worthy, but sure, you know, put it on there. You know, not on the 500 greatest debut or the 500 greatest albums ever. That's just not the case. 
But uh, yeah, you can put it on there. It's Elvis Presley, so of course they're gonna put it on there. And of course, I actually forgot this album, but uh, the Stone Roses, Stone Roses, I fucking love this album. I mean, yeah, before Oasis Blur and their kin invented Britpop, that was self-titled 1989 debut by the Stone Roses. And then they mentioned something about the shitty R.E.M. and the mediocre Stooges, so don't read along to that. But uh, yeah, definitely an inspiration for Oasis. I think for Blur too, but not per se. You know, they have more of an artsy style, whereas the Stone Roses are more of an alt rock act, which really appealed to Oasis, of course. Uh, great debut album, one of the greatest in my opinion. Uh, it's just classic, honestly. I mean, every song on this album is just fantastic. Check it out, you know, She Bangs the Drums, the, the opener, I Wanna Be Adored, I'm the Resurrection, the epic closer. I mean, it's just such a phenomenal album, all of it. Unfortunately, they didn't really release anything after this, but I mean, how can you follow this up? Or, well, they did try, but never really succeeded, so there we go. They just faded into obscurity. And then we have uh, number 77, Tag Me Later by Dur Drake. Um, I mean, it is a good album, I don't mind Drake, but it's not one of the best of all time, honestly. And especially not about the Stone Roses and the Who My Gen. I mean, fuck's sake, mate, that's just fucking retarded. Then we have uh, 76, and I know this is a critical darling, uh, Are We Not Men, We Are Devo, uh, question Are We Not Men, answer We Are Devo, such a dumbass title. I mean, it is kind of clever, but it is kind of dumb too. Devo, I don't really mind Devo, they are one in wonder. They have some critical acclaimed albums uh, that makes them a special band, but I never really care for their new wave, uh, you know, art rock style, I don't really mind them, honestly. Uh, number 75 is the Beauty and the Beat by the Go-Go's. Number 77 is XX by XX. Number 73 is Come Away With Me with, uh, by Nora Jones. Number 72 is uh, the self-titled Le Zeppelin album. Uh, definitely a classic, I do really like it. Um, it's not my favorite Led Zeppelin album, you know, go uh, a few years later after that and there you go. Uh, but definitely a important album in rock history, I do really love it and you know, it's, it's a classic, you know. Cannot really elaborate on this album, it's just a classic. Number 71 is What's the 411 by My Mary, 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 Mary J. Blige, that was fucking stupid. Uh, number 70 is Drive by PJ Harvey. Number 69 is Pink Flag by Wire. Number 70 or 68 is Talking Heads. 77 by Talking Heads. Um, yeah, Talking Heads was always one of those bands that I tried to get into. Didn't really work out for me. They're, they're just kind of too weird for my taste. But if you like them, that's alright. You know, they are a critical acclaimed band. They are pretty much the critical darlings before Radiohead was a critical darling. So there we go. So, so you know, I do like the bands, but never really got into them, honestly. And I mean, this is just fucking insulting. I mean, 67, Get Rich or Die Trying by 50 Cent. I mean, it's pretty much his only good album compared to his like shitty discography, but above the Talking Heads debut, I mean, no way. That's just insulting. 50 Cent, one of the worst rappers ever. Don't even put him on here. Number 66 is the Stooges by the Stooges, a uh, good album. Didn't really mind it. It's you know it's pretty bland, it's pretty typical. I do like it, but it's yeah, you know it's alright. Then we have 65, um, Exile in Guyville by Slutfair, Liz Fair. I mean that's title alone, Exile in Guyville. I mean this is a plain fucking slut. I mean, just look at that cover mate. I mean there are some good songs on this album, I cannot name them, but uh, you know they it is a catchy album, it is kind of alternative, kind of art rock. That is interesting, but she just fucking... Yeah, I mean, she ju just demolished after this album. She just turned into complete pop garbage after this album. So, don't even mind checking the rest of her discography. This is wh what you want to have, and even this is kind of questionable in my opinion. Then we have 64, which is I Just Can't Stop by the English Beat. Uh, 63 is uh, She's So Unusual by Cindy Lauper. Actually, um, you know, it's not it's not one of my favorites, honestly, but it is kind of a hidden gem. I, I think, you know, Cindy Lauper was always kind of like an underappreciated pop star. You know, Girls Wanna Have Fun and stuff like that, uh, time after time. You know, classic hits like that. They were kind of overplayed, but she never really got the recognition that I think she deserves. 
So definitely an underrated artist, but you know, um, if she would not be on the list, I wouldn't really mind it either way. So there we go. Uh, 62 is Roxy Music by Roxy Music. 61 is Up the Bracket by the Libertines. 60 is Tidal by Fiona Apple. 59 is Fever to Tell by Yeah Yes. 58 is Pretty Hate Machine by Nine Inch Nails. Uh, great debut album, didn't even think about it again. Uh, of course, their preceding two albums are, you know, the best. Yeah, pretty much the best in their discography. But this was a great build up, you know. You still got some good songs on here, like Head Like a Hole. You have that other song. I, I haven't really checked most of this album out, but, you know, pieces of it. Um, fucking hell, you know, you have that other song. You know that song, uh, which sounds really, really cool. What the fuck is going on outside? Fucking hell, retard. It doesn't matter where I move, you know, I still live with retard everywhere, so it doesn't really matter. Number 57 is uh, Oracular Spectacular by MGMT. Number 56 is Forever Forever Ago by Bon Iver. Number 55 is uh, Super Dupa Fly by Miss. Missy Elliot, Miss Miss Demeanor Elliot, Miss Demeanor, fucking up, stupid ass title. Uh, number 54 is Kill em All by Metallica, classic trash metal album. Uh, I mean, if you want to get into trash metal, then that is definitely the album for you to go. So definitely check it out because, you know, um, I do really love the record and yeah, you should check it out. Fucking hell, man. Uh, 52 is Boy by U2, good album, um, definitely not the best in their discography, but it is a classic. I haven't really got into this album, honestly, I've listened to it a few times and it never really got on with me, caught on with me. So maybe if I re-listen to it again, you know, besides the I Will Follow single, which is great. I haven't really gotten into this album, I've listened to it a few times, like I said, but... Um, yeah, so it should be on the list, you know. Uh, Rolling Stone are basically YouTube worshippers, so of course YouTube is going to make an appearance. So yeah, middle of the road is, you know, that's good, it's alright. Then we have 51, which is, yeah, this is a great one, this is The Smiths by The Smiths. Uh, great, amazing debut album. It's definitely like the most underappreciated album by The Smiths because, you know, most people are talking about uh, maybe the compilation albums or the Queen is Dead, of course, or Meat is Murder. And I think their first and their last album are kind of like not really talked about, but I do think that this album is a great one. You know, there were some hits removed from this album, you know, uh, this, charming, this Charming Man and stuff like that, so. Um, yeah, so definitely a very good debut album and search building for sure, middle of the road. Los Angeles X, X uh, 50. Yeah, so there we go. Um, number 49 is Friends Verdinand by Friends Verdinand. Number 48 is Modern Lovers by The Modern Lovers. Number 47 is Piper the Gates of Dawn by Pink Floyd. Uh, I really love this album. Um, you know, that still has Sid Barrett on it. It's not my favorite Pink Floyd album, but it's definitely like a great start in, into the Pink Floyd discography. So, there you go. And then we have 46, uh, Pearl Jam with 10. Yeah, you know, I predicted this one. You can, you know, you gotta have some Pearl Jam on there. I mean, their 10 album is just legendary, so definitely uh, deserves to be on there and just a classic. Then we have 45 with uh, Psycho Candy by The Jesus and Mary Chan. 44 is the, how can I forget this album? Black Sabbath or Black Sabbath? I mean, pretty much created a genre, pretty much, you know, it's just one of the best, honestly. It's just a fantastic debut album. Uh, Sabbath, of course, legendary heavy metal band, and their debut album is just one of the best. Just an amazing record. Then we have 43 with Grace by Jeff Buckley. Um, yeah, this is a really critical acclaimed album. There are some really good songs on this one. I can only name Hallelujah the cover, but uh, I, I know definitely that this is a very like deep and very melodic album. So definitely one of the great, and I believe it was also his only album. So there we go. And then we have 42 with uh, definitely maybe by Oasis. Uh, yeah, just you know one of the breast, one of the I want to compare Britpop with best. One of the breast, one of the best Britpop albums ever. Although most people don't really care about the genre, this was a very like revolution revolutionary album for the time. 
Uh, very rocking, very heavy while still having a poppy melody to it, still having poppy songs like Married with Children and you know Dixie's Dinner, stuff like that. Uh, so this is a very, very fantastic album. I really love it and Wonderful Ways is best for sure. Uh, then we have 41 with Boston by Boston, 40 is Marky Moon by Television, 39, with, 39 is pronounced Leonard Skinner, stupid ass title. Number 38 is Outlon, Outlon, fucking hell, Outlandos de Amor by the, the fucking hell, I'm speaking. Outlandos de Amor by the police. Good album. Um, yeah, it, it is a classic. I do, I, I do not think it deserves to be 38, but it's definitely like a good album in, a, in and of itself. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a bit too safe for my taste, but it's still a good album and well, well, still for the, well, still one of their best, but it's not one of my favorites. But you know, sure, it deserves to be on there. Number 37 is uh, Greetings from Asbury Park from uh, Bruce Springsteen and Jay, whatever that means. Uh, Give Up, Postal Service, 36. 35 is, uh, of course, the Weezer album, Blue. Uh, one of my favorites is a front to back classic album. Uh, yeah, they never really made a better album than this. Yeah, Pinkerton, I guess. But I mean, this is still their go to album. It's a fantastic uh, debut album and definitely one of the best. And then we have 34, which is The Doors by The Doors. Uh, you know, another great debut album, just a classic front to back. Crystal Ship, Breaking Through to the Other Side, 20th Century Fox. Light My Fire, uh, The End is on there. I mean, this is just one of the best albums ever, honestly. You know, screw debut albums, one of the best albums ever. So there we go. Uh, number 33 is Hot Fuzz by The Killers. Really like it's not it's not a bad album. It's okay, but above Weezer and the Doors, like really, mate. Do do we start even like check the list or do they just go on with it as they go along? Like fucking hell, mate. It's such a dumbass pick. Number thirty three, uh, number thirty two is Three Feet High and Rising by De La Soul. Number thirty one is Dummy by Portishead. Thirty is whatever people say, and that's what I'm not by Arctic Monkeys. Number 29 is Enter the Wu-Tang, 30, 36 Chambers, Wu-Tang Clan. Uh, I, actually, this record is requested by Steve Young. I'm gonna check it out soon. It's a very acclaimed record. But from what I've heard so far, the production is really good. The songs are really solid. So it's definitely uh, an anticipated album for me. It is one of rap's best I've heard. So, you know, gotta be a great, gotta be a great album. Great title too, Enter the Wu-Tang, 30, 36 Chambers. Sounds classic, so has to be good, right? Number 28 is B-52s by the B-52s. Number 27 is uh, actually a record that I listened to yesterday, Van Halen by Van Halen. Uh, just a classic album, one of the best debut albums ever, just front to back classic album. Every song just kills, honestly, so. This is one of the best for sure. I really love this album and, you know, rock on Van Halen. Then we have 26, which is Run DMC, Run DMC. 25 is Slender Than a Gentle by Pavement. Number 24 is Vampire Weekend by Vampire Weekend. Number 23 is Ready to Die by the Notorious VIG. It's okay, it's an okay album. I don't really mind it, but you know, uh, he pretty much died after this. You know, Ready to Die, he got shot. The end, so there we go. Number 22 is Violent Famous by Violent Famous. Number 21 is My Aim is True by Elvis Costello. Number 20 is Number Pleasure by Joy Division, of course, one of the defining debut albums ever. It's a critical claim, darling. You know, Joy Division is very low, New Order is very low, but it doesn't get much better than the debut album, honestly. Uh, number 19 is The College Dropout by Kanye West. Um, yeah, Kanye West. I mean, honestly, he can be on this list, I don't mind, but not number 19, honestly. And number 18 is Murmur by R.E.M. You know, speaking of artists that I don't think deserve to be on there, there you go. Number 17 is Please Please Me by The Beatles, a very classic album. I don't, I don't think it deserves to be like in the top 20, but it definitely deserves some recognition. It's a very catchy album, it's very melodic, it has a lot of great songs on it. But I don't think uh, it's, you know, yeah, they, they actually recorded it in over 12 hours. Like, f that, that should say it off, like fucking hell. It's a good album, but it's simplistic as well. You know, the Beatles did release so many albums because what they released was simple as fuck. 
Not all of it, but most of it. So there we go. And number 16 is the card by the cars. Number 15 is Funeral by Arcade Fire. Uh, I believe I did name this one, or maybe I didn't. One of the best debut albums of this deck or of this century, honestly, and arguably of all time. Just the the number, you know, the number a trilogy is just amazing. Um, uh, Rebellion lies. I mean, there's just so many classics on this one. Uh, Wake up, you know, neighborhood one tunnels. Just like a fantastic album. I really love this album. Um, one of the best for sure. Classic. Then we have number 40, Reasonable, Reasonable Doubt by Jay-Z, I don't really mind Jay-Z. He has a good day, you know, you know uh, the Black Album is pretty good, uh, the Blueprint is pretty good, so he has some good albums and his debut. It deserves to be on there, but I don't think it's like almost top 10 worthy, that's no way. Number 13, The Pretenders by The Pretenders, number 12, The Clash by The Clash, uh, Cla yeah, clash Ick. <laughs> oh, I'll kill me, Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, of course, most people will cite London Calling as their best album. Some people will say The Clash by The Clash. So, definitely, you know, deserves to be on there. I, I, don't, I don't really mind The Clash. They're okay to me, you know, but, uh, you know, if you like them, you know, they deserve to be on there. They did shape pretty much the punk movement, so cannot really deny that. Number 11 is Illmatic by Nas, one of my favorite rap albums ever. There's a lot of classic songs on this one, uh, very great. Rap album, uh, Illmatic, you know, it doesn't, go, it doesn't get much better than Illmatic though in rap, does it? No. Uh, number 10 is Wars by Patti Smith. Number 9 is Music from Big Pink by The Band. Number 8 is Is This It by The Strokes. I've actually checked this record out like recently. Uh, I do really love this album. I do think it's like one of my autumn favorites, but I don't think it's like the 8th best one. It's a good one, it's a notable one, you know, they probably think, oh, you know, it's, um, it's, it's a very classic one, so let's put it high on there. On there. It's a very critical claim one. It is a great record, but I don't think it's like the eighth best debut album ever, but it still deserves to be on there. Uh, number seven is Nevermind the Bullock by the Sex Pistols. I actually didn't think about this one, but yeah, definitely. An amazing debut album, uh, Pretty Vacant, uh, Holidays in the Sun, Anarchy in the UK, you know, classic songs. Uh, bodies, EMI, just this whole album is just classic, honestly. Front to back, killer album, all of it. I mean, what can you really say about that? Number six is Trader of the Cont by NWA. Um, yeah, you know, it's alright, it pretty much is like the face of hip hop music. It is a good album. Uh, I don't, well, yeah, it should be this high because it is a pretty revolutionary rap album, so you know, sure, put it on there. And number five is The Velvet Underground and Nico by The Velvet Underground. One of the best debut albums ever. Velvet Underground is just a fantastic band. Very like mellow and very dark band. Uh, just overall a very like beloved band by me. You know, they're one of the greatest artists ever and their debut album is no exception. Although they have three self-titled albums, so that's a little bit lazy. You know, Les Zeppelin too, but they have a little lengthier discography, whereas the Velvet Underground only has five albums, you know. Their compilation album, I'm, I'm counting, you know. That is also self-titled, self-titled the album, and self-titled this one, and Nico. A little bit lazy, but you know, it doesn't really deteriorate from the quality, so there we go. Oh my god, um, number four, you know, I was thinking, let's just get this album out of the way, let's get it out of the way, and it just didn't appear, it didn't appear, and well, here it is. Number four, Epitaph for Destruction by Guns N' Roses. I mean, one of the most overrated albums ever, you know, for sure. It's not really a good of good song from there, Welcome to the Jungle is okay, Paradise City is overplayed as fuck, Speech Out of Mind is horrible, Rocket Queen is sex, sex, Sexist. Uh, all of the other songs are fitter, really bad. So this is just a really overrated album. Honestly, I don't mind it. And above the Velvet Underground, above Pearl Jam, above Oasis. I mean, like fucking hell, mate. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Above Led Zeppelin, <laughs> fucking hell. Above Led Zeppelin, you know they mention Led Zeppelin. Above them, no. Number three is Are You Experienced by Jimi Hendrix. Definitely one of the best debut albums ever. I really love it. Um, 
Yeah, you know, Hey Joe, Purple Haze, uh, the title track, Fire, uh, Stone. There's just so many classics on this album. Uh, number two is the Ramones, but the Ramones. I mean, it's not a bad album, but it's like the second best one. What's gonna be number one though? I don't even know. Alters, Alters of Madness. Um, I don't know. So let's just check it out. What's number one? License to Ill by the Beastie Boys. Okay. Um, it's a good day. It's a great day, y'all. I love it. The production is great. The sampling, you know, they have some Beastie Boys on there. ACDC, Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath. So, gotta love that. Um, I do think it's an amazing day. Um, I, I prefer their Paul's Boutique album. They're coming on a little bit more. It is one of my favorite debut albums too, but I don't think it is the greatest debut album ever though. It's a great, it's a great album, don't get me wrong, but the greatest of all time? Well, you know, I'm glad that that other album didn't make it to number one and it's still a classic, I still love it. So, you know, it is kind of a satisfying number one if you are, you know, I'm a big Beastie Boys fan, so it's kind of a satisfying uh, number one pick. I, I would have gone with, uh, you know, the Jimi Hendrix album, but whatever, you know, this can be, a, this is right on my alley too, so there we go. Uh, so thank you for watching this video, um, let me know what you think should be on the list, what do you think about the list, let me know your favorite debut album. I'm really disappointed that Gish didn't make it on the album, you know, the Smashing Pumpkins album. I'm really disappointed in that, but I am really happy that uh, definitely maybe made it by ways, as you know. 10, of course, Velvet Underground, uh, Led Zeppelin ha has to be on there. So, yeah, you know, most of the albums are really classic, and I do think that the list for the most part will be really solid. Thank you for watching this video. Like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Let me know what you think about this list in the comments down below. Abonnement, I will see you guys in the next video. And peace.